Welcome everyone to Morning Watch. Good morning. And blessings to each one of you at this wonderful Christmas season. June and I were privileged to attend an amazing rendition of Handel's Messiah last Friday evening here in Aurelia. The music of the orchestra was thrilling, the songs of the soloist so moving, but the words of scripture in the songs was absolutely soul stirring. What a magnificent piece of work by George Frederick Handel. And when we stood for the Hallelujah Chorus, we were overwhelmed with emotion, joy, and praise for God's precious gift of his son Jesus to this earth to bring salvation, peace, and hope. The prophet Isaiah, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wrote these words about 800 years before Christ's birth. They're found in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. In fact, June, I can just hear the music in the back. I almost broke into singing. Well, in Luke chapter 2, we hear the Christmas story. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, <coughs> to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them <coughs> in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. That was the King James Version, wasn't it? That was the King James Version, the version that many of us memorized that in. And I remember way back 
when I was probably seven or eight saying that with our Sunday school class down at the old Orange Hall on uh, Mississauga Street because we had no room in our church for the crowds that we had in those days. Well, let's pray. Lord, we come to you today and we want to give you praise for all that you have done. And Father in heaven, we thank you for sending your son to come to be born and to think that he was placed in a manger, born in a cave or a stable, not a place for a king, but Father, you sent him to be of lowly estate because you wanted to raise him up. And Father, we at this Christmas time just want to give you praise. And uh, I'm sure we'll tell a little bit more of the story as we go. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first song that we would like to sing today is uh, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. But did you know that most of the carols were written over 250 years ago? And they're still meaningful and singable and wonderful as they help us to relive the events of that wonderful night in Bethlehem over 2,000 years ago when Jesus Christ, the Messiah and the Savior of the world was born in a stable to a humble virgin Jewish gal named Mary with Joseph, her husband, a carpenter standing by and shepherds on the hillsides of Judea visited by an angelic host of angels <coughs> announced the birth of Jesus, God in human flesh. For this episode today, we have a guest, Carrie Martin, who's going to come and join us with her violin as we sing the carols. So join with us in Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Continue our singing as we join our voices in the carol, O Come, 
all you faithful. would be able to relate and know that he was their savior. If he'd just come for the rich and famous, then those of the society that didn't have as much would have felt left out. But Jesus came for everyone, ordinary baby. Common would have kept him apart. 
his birth and his death he planned from the start. But between his entrance and his exit was a life that has affected everyone who's walked the earth to this very day. God's pure extension, giving you and me the chance to be reborn. He was just an ordinary baby, that's the way he planned it, maybe. songs like kind of a devotion could you come up to top that I know those words are wonderful aren't they <clears throat> our devotional tonight or today is called blessed in believing and it's about Mary when the angel came and announced that she was going to give birth to a baby even though she was a virgin she who has believed is blessed because what was spoken to her by the Lord will be fulfilled and remember Mary said even so be it to me in the kingdom of God, believing is a prerequisite to receiving. God spoke to Mary and gave the assurances he always gives when he assigns the impossible to his people. Everything was in place for God to act. Everything waited on Mary to believe him. Once she believed, it was done. It takes an undivided heart to believe under such circumstances and a pure heart to see God. This has always been God's way with his people. Mary could not see all that had been arranged and assembled in the courts of heaven. That's quite a thought, isn't it? She could not see the legions of angels prepared to protect her and her baby. She was unaware of the future and all that she and her child would face. All she knew was that God had spoken to her and that was enough. So she responded, I am the Lord's slave. May it be done to me according to your word. When God speaks about his plans, he does so with everything already in place to fulfill his word. God never speaks hypothetically. He knows exactly what will come to pass. He simply asks you and me to believe him. We will experience great blessing when we place our absolute trust in him. Mary could not have dreamed all that would result from her faithful obedience. Likewise, we cannot possibly imagine all that God has in store for us when we trust him. He knows exactly what he will do to bring salvation to someone we have prayed for or to heal a friend or to provide for our needs. God has everything in place. He asks us to believe him. May God give us faith to trust and believe and take him at his word. God bless you. Thanks, June. And uh, we have one more carol to sing. And Carrie is going to come and join us uh, with this one. In fact, she and June are going to uh, play uh, an introduction verse for us. And we'll sing two verses and then we'll just pause again and listen to the two of them before we sing the third verse of Silent Night. This is my absolutely favorite. Christmas Carol.
close in prayer in just a minute, but I want to mention to you that next week Alyssa will be doing the Morning Watch. And the next time that you see us via Morning Watch, it will be December the 30th. Mm -hmm. And our Christmas celebrations of 2021 will be passed. And we'll be approaching the new year of 2022. And June and I, Carrie and Luke, who has been doing a production today, want to wish you a joyous and a blessed Christmas time. And remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity we've had to do this morning watch. And Father, we also pray that if there's anyone who's watching who's never received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that they would just pause and say, Lord Jesus, would you come into my life, forgive me of my sin, because of what you, Jesus, did at Calvary's cross for us. You paid the price. And Lord, that one day we can all be in heaven together. What a day that will be. And Lord, we just pray you'd be with each one this Christmas time, and may we all remember what we are doing and who we celebrate. It's your birthday. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, goodbye, everyone, and God bless you. And Merry Christmas.